Oh, good morning, folks. Welcome back to the farm. Boy, she's an absolutely gorgeous morning here this morning. Gorgeous, let me tell you. Not only was it gorgeous, there was geese. Yes, I awoke this morning to the sound of geese flying over the farm and heading for the lake. I don't know where, I don't know where they're going to go. It'll be a hard landing. Crash landing, perhaps. Anyways, you can hear the ewes are bellering in the background. We left them out last night. It was so, so just beautiful. We were just like, ah, you know what? Dude, I don't even think it froze last night. So I'm not going to put anybody in the barn. We expect that we're going to have a lull here. We have 29 lambs on the ground. And uh, nobody looks close. You know, there's the remaining, I think, five or six. And they don't, they don't look like they're close. So wasn't too worried about bringing anybody in. But nevertheless, I'm going to do a little due diligence. Take a walk through. See if anybody had any lambs. And if so, then we'll bring them in. That's looking like nobody lambed overnight here. Everybody nice and calm. There's a couple here that I'm not even sure they're actually even going to lamb. Like Mavis. She's our oldest ewe. She was actually part of our starter flock. From the from the feral group that we got from Fairview that one time. Back back in uh, 2017. But yeah, so I don't know. I, she's looking like... I mean, she's looking fat. I'll give her that. But she's not bagging up or anything like that. So hmm, I'm not too sure. Then there was a couple of younger ones that... Uh, I don't I don't think they I don't think they would have caught I just kind of tossed them in there see if they would then great and if not well then it's kind of no loss they'll be they'll be ready for next year kind of thing but the old classics Gertrude you know she's been here she was actually one of the originals too Mavis Gertrude I think they might be the only two left of the originals we started with uh what do we have we had five U's and a ram or maybe it was four U's and a ram I can't remember Anyways, we're up to uh, up to 22 ewes right now. We had more, but I sold some off last year just because of the feed shortage. We probably would have had close to close to 40, but uh, you can only feed based on what you have sitting in the yard, right? And so round bales were so terribly expensive; it just wasn't feasible for us to try and keep the keep the flock going and. Uh, you know at three hundred dollars a bale so what we did is we took basically you know any any of the b team and we just sent them down the road and they kept kind of our best and, and it's good we did because even with the best that we kept we really struggled we really struggled with lamb mortality and uh you know feed quality was so terrible but uh you know definitely this year feed quality is much higher pouring the groceries into them and uh, i think we're definitely going to we're going to come out actually come out better despite having despite having a cull year last year we're going to come out in a in a better condition for sure much better genetics much better uh, uh birth rates as well as birth weights right so we've in past years we've thrown quite a few singles this year we've got uh 14 boys 15 girls or no it's the other way around 15 boys 14 girls but nevertheless it's pretty much twins all the way except for one so that's that's pretty good actually actually we did have one set of triplets but one of the one of the triplets was stillborn so we still got a set of twins out of it but uh yeah overall overall a pretty successful year so far so now the successful year that doesn't mean i can just rest on those laurels and throw a big check in the bank i'm gonna have to reinvest quite a bit so if we're gonna build the flock we're gonna keep some additional replacements to get us up to where I kind of want to be I'm gonna to have to sell one ram for sure and uh, find a replacement because we'll have recycled genetics don't really want to do that we'll have to source out a different ram and then because we're gonna have more lambs that are growing to maturity I'm also gonna to have to build some more fence I'm have to fence off some more sheep pasture I got a few areas picked out down in the hollow down there where it's kind of a treat area. The cows don't go in there much. There's really, you know, it's kind of scrubby, low quality, perfect place for sheep to thrive, actually. And uh, then there's another spot down past the corrals, just to the south of the corrals. We call it the bale yard. When we first bought the farm, that's where all the bales were from the previous owners. We stored bales down there the first year, and then we quickly realized that you know, access is actually a huge issue. We want to keep bales up here in the yard and we want to keep the sheep up here in the yard. Don't want to have animals down there where they're out of reach. Especially not when you get three feet of snow. 
Anyways, while I'm out here, I just want to check on the old stock trailer here. Actually, I parked it over there, kind of where I lost traction in the middle of winter, and I just dropped it. And then uh, yesterday, my wife said my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, wanted to use it for 4H to pack the steer, and I noticed it had a low tire. I just thought I'd have a look at it here. Yeah, I know it looks good. Also, the spring-loaded latch for the divider in the middle was, uh, well, anything sits for a long time outside. Probably not gonna, you know, especially when it's made of metal. Not gonna work that good. So, got in there with the grease gun, a little bit of ATF, lubed it all up. It's working fantastic there now. They were gonna come last night, but I think they had like a family dinner or something. So they probably gonna come later this morning and pick that up. So it's all road ready, race ready for them. It's funny how a day progresses and oftentimes not quite the way you think it would. But anyways, we're here in the barn and I've got the two rams over, yeah, they're not behind the shop anymore. They're here in the barn. And the reason for that is because yesterday I put a call into the shearer and I wasn't sure if he was even in the country. So I don't know if you've ever heard of Jack Butterick. Yes, three time world champion sheep shearer, Jack Butterick is coming to the farm tomorrow. He's going to shear all of our ewes and the two rams. And uh, so a hard, hard guy to pin down because, I mean, he's all over he's all over the country kind of shearing sheep and stuff. But anyways, glad to see he's back this year. So we're on for a 9 a.m. start. So I brought the rams over. I've got kind of a run set up on the far side over here. So in the morning, uh, probably about 5, 30, 6 o'clock, I'm going to run all the ewes into that side, pen them up, try and separate the lambs off, let the lambs just kind of, they can just kind of congregate in the center here for now. But then when Jack gets here, then I'm going to put them outside. Hopefully things kind of quieten down. I'll put a couple of sheets of plywood there in the center underneath the gambrel hook. And, uh, and then so that can be his kind of a shearing platform. He can hang his shears right off of the, the winch there. There's power there. And uh, yeah, we're actually, this is one of the last year we did it right there and it was actually awesome. It was absolutely awesome. But we didn't really have the panels kind of set up the way we do now. We had the panels, but it was pretty freestyle. So I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, that uh, things go smoothly tomorrow. But anyways, excited because you, know, you never know. Was it gonna be May? Is it gonna be June? Is it gonna be September? I think somebody's ready to go in the house. Is it going to be September before you can finally get shears? Anyways, I'm glad to get it done here. What's tomorrow going to be? Second of April. Get it done. And then the girls can just go back out on pasture and uh, we'll be set. All right, well, it's getting on in the day here. And we've got, oh, maybe, maybe an hour. Yeah, maybe an hour of daylight left. So I'm just going to run out, check everybody again here. Nobody's going in the barn tonight because I've got them two rams in there. Can't have those shenanigans. But I am going to have a quick look through. Make sure we got no more lambs today. Make sure it looks like nobody's going to be close or anything crazy like that. Shut the barn doors up. And then uh, we'll get back at it about 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Never mind. Fix any of that. Tell me here's lambing. So... We're not gonna let you go. Let's see if we can catch some footage of this. Well, I got my camping chair all set up here, just waiting on Thelma. I'm thinking probably within 30 minutes we should see something happening here. Well, it's been 30 minutes. There's no progression yet. She's been in there <laughs> pawing a little bit, but when I seen her outside there, she was pawing pretty heavy. I think she was actually trying to dig a new water well for us, so she was pawing there. She had a pretty deep hole dug. I don't know if she was going for a water birth or just what she was doing, but anyways, uh, patience mm -hmm. is the game, I suppose. And down she goes. Maybe something's gonna happen now. What do you think, Thelma? Nice night for it, isn't it? Any moment now, we should have a new little baby. Good job, Mama. Keep pushing. Good job, Mama. Oh, that's another big lamb. 
feisty one too. That's good. Well, Thelma's had her second one. Second one's all black. That's awesome. Good job, Mama. Well, both lambs are up. They've sucked. That's about all the damage I can do for one day. So I think I'm going to go get some shut eye because tomorrow's going to be a pretty early day and a big one at that. So I'll let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.